All right, it's Contagious Ministries. I'm Gabriel Rich Wilson, and this is Heather Kabisky. And we have a uh, honorary guest. Um, God has just blessed us with, uh, with his presence and a brother, um, our brother David here, and he will be he will be uh, leading us in some worship. So we'll be uh, getting into that um, real quick. <clears throat> I have we still have the book Judah's uh, book, Jesus is. I personally have not read it, but I hear it's good. So, um, signed by him, uh, contagious two contagious ministries. So to the winner, um, and yeah. So don't forget to sign up. Uh, completely free, no charge or anything, no strings attached. Um, yeah, and do that by going on our Facebook page and or um, to our website contagiousm.com. Uh, and there's usually a URL code, URL code, excuse me, around. Um, <laughs> And yeah, so we're passing those out as well. So, uh, with that, I think we're uh, we're gonna jump right into some worship. So. mistakes but Jesus loves us and he forgives us when we make mistakes when we humble ourselves before the Lord things happen lives are changed forever that's what this next song is called humble thyself in the sight of the Lord Oh, 
It's only through the blood of Jesus that he's going to be able to take you home. If you haven't received that blood, it's not too late. It's not too late. He's got a home for you in heaven. In the glories. He's waiting for you. going to go ahead and get started. Thank you, David. Praise yeah, thank God. you. Very much. You. Praise God. Hallelujah. And yeah, so <laughs> we're going to have Heather Kavitsky, who's preaching tonight, and she, will, her and I both uh, will be speaking on abandonment. Yes. Um, actually, you know what? There we go. No more technical difficulties. Um. And we're actually going to switch things up, but we're going to do prayer requests at the very end. Um, and yeah, so let's get right into it. All right. I am going to speak, um, or we are going to speak actually, on, like um, Gabriel said, abandonment. And I've dealt with these feelings for my entire life. Um, you know, I mean, my... Uh, and I'll be truthful, um, my dad and mom were, uh, divorced when I was about one and a half, and I never, I saw my dad about once a month, um, yeah, once a month, and, um, it never really affected me until I think I had my own children, and I started really realizing how much it did hurt that I didn't have him full-time in my life, um, and there's different situations that prevented that, but it's still something I was longing for even as an adult, because every girl loves their dad, and that's just, I mean, that's just a natural thing, everyone wants to be, you know, daddy's little princess, daddy's girl, and many, many kids don't have that now. So, I'm going to talk about what the feelings of abandonment might feel like. You may feel sad, you may feel crushed, you may feel hurt and very alone, even though you may have people around you who do love you, you may not feel that. You may think, well, nobody's here for me. Why, you know, why is this happening? Why would, you know, God cause this to happen to you? If he loves us, why would he cause us to have so much hurt in our lives? And a lot of times you can learn from that hurt. That helps you grow into a deeper um, relationship with God and with actually the people who do really love you and who are around you. Um, and you can always turn to God because he is your father. And no matter what, who's failed you, he's always there to comfort you and just to carry you through those times. Um, you also may feel um, a family can't trigger your depression and uh, mistrust in people who, who mean the best, who are your family, who are your friends, and they love you deeply. It can cause you to, you know, just kind of worry all the time. But in Deuteronomy 4, 31, it says, For the Lord your God is merciful is a merciful God. He will not abandon you or destroy you or forget the covenant that with your forefathers, which he has con confirmed by oath. He also says that he will never, he's never going to leave you. He's never going to, you're never going to have to experience that with your relationship with God. Um, now, a lot of times with the abandonment, you feel like, well, I should just hurt that person back. And that's not what God wants at all. Um, even though they hurt you, it doesn't give, really, it, not even your right, it doesn't, it was not going to help anything just to hurt them back. Um, you know, you don't want to trust them at all. But what I've learned is you can't, you, if you try, you try to show them that even though you're so hurt by them, that you can still care about them, which is very difficult to do. It's just, it is the most hard thing I think I've gone through. But... I believe there is a, there is light in the tunnel, and God will help you every step of the way. Every time you feel hurt, every time you feel sad, depressed, angry, anger, it, and it's a, it's okay to be angry, but you can't stay in the anger. You have to pray that God will help you feel, move through that. What you can do, we need to turn all things over to God and pray. 
continually praying. And a lot of people actually do have a hard time with that word pray. And that really just means you need to talk. Talk to God like he's your best friend. I mean, everyone, you, most people have best friends. And you want to tell them everything about your life. And that's what God wants. Even though he knows, he wants to hear from you. Because you're his child and you, he is your father. The next step would be to bring, begin by asking God to help you through the steps of forgiving. <clears throat> Forgiveness is very tough. I'm not going to make any bones about that. Forgiving people is so hard. And it's so hard. Because you don't want to forgive someone who has hurt you continually. And there, there, are, there are those people in the world who are just continually to hurt you just because they don't, either they don't know better or they just want to. And it's hard. And sometimes you do have to just separate yourself from that. Those people until they can just, um, you can just continually pray for them. You can continually pray for the relationship, the friendship, the if it's a child-parent relationship. And see, that one is very, very difficult. <coughs> because you don't want to not talk to your parents. You don't want to let them not know what's going on in your life. But sometimes for the health of yourself, you're continually praying for them. You continually asking for forgiveness for them, asking for God just to heal those wounds. And those are very deep wounds. And they come up at many other times, and you know, just out of the blue, they'll come up. And abandonment affects your entire life, the entire life. And there's just, God is the only one that can heal that. And. What I've learned is you keep praying and praying and praying, praying God will heal that relationship, praying God, please. I don't want to be without this person in my life, but if I need to, please show me that way. Now, there is someone who will never abandon you, and that is God. God made you, made every single one of us. And he didn't create us in his image. Now we all sometimes we don't live that way, but that's the steps you gotta to take to become to get back to God. Uh, like David was saying, you know, it's never too late. The moment it's too late to ask God to help you and to forgive you and to spend forever with him is if you have already passed on. So you can never walk too far away from God. You can never do something so bad. And that's a lot, I think um, a lot of people think that. Well, I've done this, this, and this. I'm, God can't care about me still. And He does. He loves you so much. He is your father, and He is your best friend. And in Isaiah 49, 18, it says, See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Now, this world... Even even Christians, I mean, Christians are not perfect people at whatsoever. <clears throat> God won't abandon you, though. Never, ever, ever abandon you. You are secured in His image. You are loved by Him. You are cared by Him. And like I said, you can't do anything ever that you can't get back. God. Now God hasn't abandoned you and you have direct access to God on his throne of grace. It's hard not I'll, I mean it's hard not to uh, have that the feeling of well why should I trust him and trust is a very hard thing and you do have to earn it back once it's gone. But you can always trust God, and He won't ever leave you, and He won't ever hurt you in a way so bad that you would feel like you've been abandoned. Yes. And Ephesians 4, uh, 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave you. Now, my brothers and sisters, I it breaks my heart how many people have been hurt by this abandonment. I mean, we work, um, we help 
it's homeless people in Seattle at Occidental Park, and it's just, you can see the pain in their eyes, and I can see the pain in friends' eyes who, who've never had, um, who can't ever figure out how to forgive these people. And it may sound way too simple, but the first step is just asking God to forgive them and forget and hopefully heal. He will heal. He'll heal you from the top of the head to the bottom of your feet. All the wounds, every pain, and restore you to a whole person which he created. <clears throat> yeah. And also, uh, I also want to talk about uh, like the world. So the world is made to for this uh, almost like this worldly abandonment. Like the world will constantly lie and deceit and deceive us like time after time. And once we get to a certain point where we think where we need to go, it's it then it abandons us. You know, and that's that's not exactly that's it's not right. Uh, that's it's scary to think that. Media is programming us to, to want these things, but once we get there, it's almost to a point where we do self-abandonment. And that's, that becomes very, it's very scary. Um, not only that, but man, self-abandonment with, with greed. We can, I know I was at, at a point where I was so greedy that I abandoned myself and all of my friends and my loved ones, everyone that I cared about. And it's not just, it's not just that, but you can abandon yourself with drugs too. I'm, I was a recovering addict and now I'm clean and it's it's crazy how drastic abandonment is in the world uh, but not only that but even family members it'll seem like they abandon you and especially especially in, t in troubled times you know there can be family you know the family's always usually is always there but I know a gentleman who, who became a Christian and as, as he started his walk with Jesus, after he felt the touch and the love, he was so excited and so amazed by, by what God was doing in his life that he wanted to tell everybody. And he went and he told his, his friends and his, he didn't realize that not everybody gets this. But he came from such a dark place where he was, he felt abandoned. He, he felt abandonment ever since birth because his mother didn't want him. Because he was taken care of for four months. And then he got adopted. I mean, he was so relieved to know that somebody wanted him, that somebody loved him so much that they died for him. So he got crazy about this, and he started telling everybody. He, he told anybody and everybody, we're at dentist's office, doctor's office, his friends, his family. And <clears throat> even then, you can feel abandoned even as a Christian. But until you get, get with other brothers and sisters, you have a family. And you have a family that might not be by blood, you know, at first, but praising God that your, your blood family and the bloodline will come as well to be a part of the royal family. It's, it's tough, but in Psalms 27, 10, it says, Even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. No matter where you are, no matter what situation you're going through, it doesn't matter if you're on drugs, it doesn't matter if you're sober for a day, it doesn't matter if you've been sober for years and you just haven't gotten that love or something, that, that joy and that passion. Well, God is there. And he's saying, I'm never going to abandon you. I made you. Why would I make you to abandon you? Yeah. That's not my purpose for you. My purpose is for to love you and for you to love me. I am your father. 
talk to me as a father. Let's have a relationship like a, a son and or a daughter and a father would. Yeah. And that's that that boy was actually or that man now was uh, was me. You know? I really didn't feel like anyone was there. Especially for a full year of my life, it, it was always towards worldly things or material items. But there's something so much better that's not of this world that, you know, we might not be able to see yet with the eye, but we can sure see it with faith. Yeah. We can feel it with faith. We can be loved by faith. And we can love others by faith. And that's, that's God's true beauty, is, is love. He is love. There's no darkness about Him. None. With that, I know this might not have been the longest podcast, but, but if anybody's feeling abandoned out there, I know that there's a young lady downtown that I that I meet with maybe once or twice a month and she's going through a really hard time. And I'm sure she's feeling abandoned right now. She's told me she's lost hope. But I know God was there. He's reaching out to her and he loves her and he's not abandoned her. He showed her today even though she might not see it right now. He showed her that she has come and that she's heard the word of God and that she's loved by family and by him yeah. and by Jesus and the spirit that is present throughout the world. And with that, we're just, we're just going to do some prayers right now. We're going to pray for some people. And, and if you have any prayer requests, please text us. Um, your prayer, or you don't have to text us a name. You can text us a, a funny name or whatever. It's 206-949-7635. But yeah, we're going to start out with praying for um, for Tim. Um, he just got a job here at the airport. And he was, and he's here alone, actually. And I, if, I believe that he also has a wife who's about two weeks due, um, and she's going to have a baby. And Lord, we're praying for that situation. We're praying for the church to, to step in as family, to say that, uh, Tim, you're not alone. Throughout coming to Seattle, you're not alone, but you're, you're with family wherever you go. Wherever there's a church to step in, we are family. We're here. We're here for you. And God, I just pray for that whole situation, that you can direct him to the right body of Christ that's here to help, that's here to minister or however. And I pray for that baby that's on the way. Lord, I'm praying that you just put a blessing and a hedge of protection and that everything goes safe and you give the doctors wisdom and you give them steady hands and everything that they do and all the procedures as well as the, the health of the mother. In Jesus' name. She's the lady box now. God, and again, we, we, bring, we bring Leanne, and not only Leanne, but she has her three children, and their father just passed away, God, and they are not handling it well, as you may, as you know, because you were with them. God, and play, you just play, put a comfort upon each of them, put a comfort upon Leanne, and just hold them in your arms, your comforting arms, God, and just help them get through this, as you, you and only you can do. And Lord, we're praying for <clears throat> Carolyn Kabitsky. There's a tuberculosis test that might, that has already come back, I believe, positive, but it's it could have been false, and that we're praying for that. We're praying that it's just completely gone, and that healing is declared yeah. upon upon her, <clears throat> and that no cancer will come will come back. Yeah. And we're praying for healing in the name of Jesus. Yes. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That she will be healed and walk and have no hindrance. Yes. 
that she will be worshiping, that she will be loving, and that she will be be standing up better than ever. Yeah. Brand new in Jesus' name. God, I ask you um, to be with Sonia and the entire financial situation that is going on with her. I pray you just bless her finances, bless her as a person, bless her a hundred times over. And just help her keep you in her the front floor of her mind, God. And she just turns to you with every situation, good or bad, and she just asks for your direction in every area of her life. Yeah, and Lord, I'm also praying for the ministry. God, I'm praying for Contagious Ministries and other ministries and, and partners of ministries throughout the whole Seattle area and throughout throughout all of Washington. Washington's the most unchurched state. And Lord God, we're, we're praying for that to just be completely, completely gone and completely rid of that reputation and for the ministries to thrive and to connect with one another out of love, out of uh, patience, out of kindness. And be, being gentle. And Lord, we're praying for that. We're praying for, for a complete revival. And also the strength. The strength that uh, and the power that is given by the Holy Spirit within the book of Acts. Lord, we're praying for that, Jesus. We're just praying for the ministry to, to get stronger, yeah. Lord. And to, to unite not just the ministry, but the family of God. The family of God. Of Christ Jesus. In Jesus name. God, I bring Jose to you. He is an intern at the Bread of Life Mission. God, and play, just bless him with a place to stay. Just give him that comfort that only having somewhere to live will do. And I, you know, it must be so scary not to have no have a place to lay your head down at night. God, and I only bring to you Jose, but every homeless person across this yes. world, God. Just pray that you just put a mighty blessing upon every homeless person, God, and pray that if, you know, whatever's going on, if they don't want a place to stay, which I know can happen, anybody who wants a place to stay will be able to find a place to stay. You just continue blessing the ministries that help these people, help the homeless people, yes. and only, not only here in Seattle, but God, but everywhere in this world, pray that, you know, in the foreign countries, you will just bless them with the right food and the right water and medicine and more places, you know, to live as, you know, you know everyone that is, doesn't have that in their life, in that security. Yes, Lord. And Lord, I'm praying for the, the whole Wilson family, Lord God. I'm praying for, for Emily Wilson. I'm praying for, for Michael and the Rich family. And God, I'm praying for both of those that they will they will come to you and that they will feel feel the touch of God, that they will understand that Jesus is there. He's always been there. And that He's in heaven right now with the Father, sitting by the throne, and the Holy Spirit coming down to comfort them, to let them know that everything's all right. That everything's okay. And Lord, we're praying for them to just to, to know you, to love you, and for the receptance of love. That they can receive that love that you are giving. Jesus. God, I ask you to be with my mom and stepfather, but particularly my mom. She has been a great influence on my life, she's been a godly mother um, for all of these years. God, I pray you just, you take away every fear, every anxiety that she feels. God, you just bless her and you just comfort her and you just wipe away these fears that she has. God, and just put a calming spirit upon her and just maybe help bless her and show your hand upon her life every more each day. Lord, I'm also praying for, for Neil right now, Lord God. I'm praying for Neil and uh, that, he, that he can find a job, that you have the job already lined up for him, yeah. that you're waiting to, to hire him to sign the, 
dot the I's and cross the T's, Lord God. I'm praying for him that he will sit down and just grab, get that job like it's nothing. And Lord, also for the social security disabilities that are going through, Lord God. And I'm praying for that. And I'm praying for, for blessings upon his life spiritually, mentally, and, and physically. Just yeah. complete healing. Whatever it may be, and the whole situation is just has just has your 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 thumbprint mm-hmm. of of God and Jesus all over these these individuals that we've prayed for, and Lord, I'm also praying for the nation, Lord God. I'm praying for the nation to be swept yeah. with a complete complete new revival yeah. for for God and not not for anybody else because it's not about us it's not about the world that deceives us but Lord God it's about you Father God and that's what we're also praying we come here today to honor you and not anybody else no selfish gain but it's for you and the love letter that you have wrote is so precious and we shall hold it close to us and Lord touch the hearts of whoever's watching whoever's listening allow them to hear this and to know that they don't need to be abandoned Lord God that they are not abandoned and that you are there throughout all those tears and the crying and anything that that could have possibly went wrong throughout the life that you are there as a loving father a protector and as a God that is faithful kind and gentle Lord and we're thanking you and we're just praying for the the members the members of of Christ's body to reach out to share the good news we're praying for the great commission to take place and not only that but we're praying for not just the the nation but to flood into to Central America to South America to northern uh, to Canada to to Egypt to Madagascar to France to the UK just everywhere and that that the world would wake up And that we would see that you are there. You are there. And everything's okay. And to be still and let you work and to submit to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Yeah, please. <clears throat> please, please. Go. You're right. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. So we're going to do one last song. Because God loves you. Yes. We need more of his love. We need more of his power in our lives. That's the song we're going to close with. More love, more power.
your spirit and your power and your grace. In the name of Jesus.